Mike Sensi. Yeah, buddy. I had a, a dream the other night that you were in. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, first of all, calm down, pervert. Well, um, I just, I, I always have this erection, so. <laughs> it, it wasn't sexual. Oh, we'll little boo. Okay, so um, I had uh, pretty much spent most of my deployment stacking bodies, uh, as I am one to do. Right, right, right. And apparently some of those bodies I wasn't supposed to stack. Ooh, scandalous. Yeah, and so um, much um, inspired by recent events, uh, I am at a court-martial answering for my war crimes. Okay. Well, set the scene for us. Let's hear it. All right. So there I am. I, um, I'm i in a, a tight-fitting uh, Charlie uniform. Uh, asked to shame me. You know, they were like, this is the size you wore when you went to boot camp. But I was like, that was 15 years ago. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And uh, they made me shave and get a haircut and I'm mm. shackles. And um, I'm in the courtroom. You know, it's one of those small military courtrooms with, right. you know, some... <laughs> Dude who's just been in the military for eight years as uh now he's like a lieutenant colonel. He's the judge, you know? Yeah, exactly. He's not somebody who's been a public servant for 40 years, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, it's Gary. Oh, yeah, it's classic Gary, man. Yeah, man. He was on the bowling team. Always laying down the law. <laughs> and so to that fact, you know, they, um, they're, you know, they're like, you know, well, I've reached my decision. Uh, Sergeant Sharp, you are guilty of multiple accounts of war crimes. Oh, no. You are a discredit to yourself and that uniform and to all those who have served the country before. And then right at that moment, you kick down the door and you're like, wait. <laughs> yeah. You come running in and they're like, oh, well, order, order. And he's banging his gavel and right, everyone's right. harumph, harumph. <laughs> and, you know, and you just come in like a beautiful white uh, stallion in your, uh, your dress whites. Nice. You know, you, you would have been there earlier, but you had to, you know, put on your little stars on your ribbons and medals. I had to look good for this entrance. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. For you know, sure. You had to make an entrance. Absolutely. And you're like, Your Honor, I have new evidence that will exonerate Sergeant Sharp. And like, what could you possibly say that uh, would make up for all the innocent civilians he's killed? Mm. And then out of, out of your pockets, you bust out a black cherry and a mango. And you're like, there ain't no laws when you're drinking claws. Holy shit. And then the entire courtroom just turns into a party. Hell yes. I'm all about it. And then, you know, bikini babes show up. Of course. Like, I just break the handcuffs. And they're like, you could have done that the whole time. And I'm like, wink. <laughs> so you even dream in ads. <laughs> That's sad. Welcome to the smoke pit. Hey. Yeah, so I... um. I'd, I'd like to say that this is um, going to be a special episode because uh, we have a new sponsor. Yes, we do. Um, Vet TV. Wah, wah, wah. If you haven't heard of them, correct yourself. Yes. And they do uh, veteran entertainment. They uh, make movies and skits and uh, television shows. They have their own fucking app. Yeah, hell yeah. It's like super cheap, too. It's like $5 for however long. Right, right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the the yeah. analytics. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's per minute. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Which might be kind of expensive depending on how much you binge. That's true. That's, that's true. not the case. Exactly. You know, it's a it's a very reasonable subscription, and there's a free trial, so you absolutely got no fucking reason not to try it out. Right. And they um they just made a full length feature film called A Grunt's Life. Yep. And so we're going to uh, interview the CEO Donnie O'Malley mm -hmm. uh, later on in this episode. Yes, we are. But before that, we're going to talk a little bit more um, about our lives. Sure. What do you got? Um, don't first dates fucking suck? They can, for sure, yeah. Because, I mean, it's like, you know, you got to, it's, it's almost like seeing like a therapist all, all over again, you know? Yeah. That was always my least favorite part of PCSing or going to a new base or getting a new uh, provider. It's like, you got to fucking start from square one. Yeah, very true. It's like I'm sitting there and I'm like, this shit again. <laughs> I don't even smoke and I'm like lighting up a cigarette. <laughs> Just indoors. <laughs> yeah. They're like, you can't do that. I'm like, shut up. Yeah, shut up. He's like, first date? You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because like the therapist, like the first appointment is like, and and like don't let this discourage you if you're looking to seek mental health, but um, you know, the first appointment is usually just filling out paperwork. Yeah. They're like, oh, my dad has a history of fucking being a dick. Right, and right. My mom has uh, male pattern baldness. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, you have to fill out your medical history. Yeah. Uh, has, has that been your experience? For therapy or first dates? <laughs> a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. I mean, therapy, that's just, that's standard practice. Uh, first dates, it does, it it does feel more like an interview slash therapy session than actual hangout for sure. Because you're, I mean, you're getting to know each other, feeling each other out. It's like the first round of a boxing match. Like, you're not going in to, to you know, 
knock each other out quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> you're just, you're trading shots. You're figuring each other out. <laughs> I'm not sure. You know, like Jose, uh, Jose, um, Mald- I can't pronounce his last name. I don't Ma- know. Magdanoff, Maldanoff. You're the urban one here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, Jose Quesadilla. That's came, right. Uh, flying in with that uh, that knee. Yeah, yeah, knocked yeah. Knocked out Ben Askren yep. in like five seconds. Mm-hmm. That's like one of those things where just like, look, you're not that hot. Do you want it or not? And they're like, yeah, okay, right. and you yeah. leave the bar. <laughs> <laughs> the train's about to leave the station, lady. Are you getting on or are you getting off? I've been paid in a few weeks. We doing this or what? <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to have to pay for those drinks. That's right. Um, yeah, and so... And it sucks because it's like, oh, you know, like, here's my damage, you know, like, what's wrong with you, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, but the good thing about it, though, is you do get the opportunity to kind of, like, dump the bullshit from your previous relationship, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like, like oh, my ex's dad worked at Pepsi, so we never have Coca-Cola in this house, you know, or, <laughs> right. or like, I, you know, the girl uh, overindulges and tells you some shit that you don't want to know. Like, oh, I made out with this dude to the Smashing Pumpkins song. You're like, great, now Smashing Pumpkins are ruined. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so, you know, you do get to data dump all the bullshit from before, but then yeah. you got to learn a whole new set of rules. That's true. Absolutely. It's like getting a new job. Like, yeah. you can't take the same bullshit you got fired with before <laughs> into the new one. <laughs> it's time to grow. Yeah, and then um, I really feel like you don't meet somebody the first date. You you meet their representative. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's very true. And it, it's more of an image of who they want uh, you to think they are. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, once you've, uh, you've hung around them a little bit more and kind of let the walls down... Then, uh, then you get to know them a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I've always kind of prescribed to the theory that you don't really know someone until you've seen them struggle, uh, either financially or with health or, um, you know, uh, something along that nature. You know, until you've seen somebody sick. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember that one time you had a cold and you were just a different person. My immune system doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just go through life. Yeah, all the the drinking and hot wings uh, don't don't really contain a lot of vitamin C. Listen, don't <laughs> put my business out there like that. <laughs> my diet is especially tuned to me from my doctor, Doctor Mike Sensi. <laughs> no, I went to make you dinner tonight. You did, and I, I had to buy like seventy dollars worth of cooking supplies. I don't cook. I don't. I, so people don't understand. Like the DoorDash joke of Mike Sensi is very real. I don't cook here. <laughs> I don't. I just don't do it. I cook eggs and hot dogs and shit. <laughs> How much shit did you have to throw away from your fridge this week? Uh, yeah, quite a bit, just because yeah. of just like expired stuff, and I was back in Indiana for two weeks and stuff. So, yeah, because I remember living in the barracks, and it was always a tragedy. Like you'd forget that you had like uh, Chinese food in your fridge, and you go out to the field, yeah, and you'd yeah, come back, and there's like mold, and you're like, God damn it, yeah, it was three dollars and fifty cents worth of kung pao <laughs> chicken I missed out on. <laughs> Why am I such a failure? <laughs> Actually, one of my uh, my favorite memes talks about that. It was, I say mean, but it's one of those screenshots of a tweet, but it says cleaning out your fridge is such a humiliating experience. You bought these plums and didn't even eat them in time. You absolute failure. You miserable piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) You're starving people over the world. Right. Yeah. It's like that joke that is just like, uh, you know, my, my ritual is every two weeks I buy, um, a, a new bag of, of baby spinach as I throw the old one unopened into the trash. It's a, I'm not even kidding. I don't know if you're making a joke or not, but it's always spinach with me. I always yeah. get spinach leaves because I do like spinach. And I'm always like, you know, I'm going to throw in my eggs or I'm going to make some kind of fuck off sandwich or whatever. But I never, ever do. So much baby <laughs> spinach in the Virginia Beach area alone is wasted <laughs> between me and Dan. No, seriously, you know, because I'm like, oh, iron, I need more of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, the military has robbed me from... Uh, uh, a healthy lifestyle with all the chemicals they've pumped in me. Right, right, right. But, like, you, but you're immune to so many made up diseases now. <laughs> They're like, uh, hey, take this malaria pill. Right. And then it's like, it'll give you boners and clear skin. And I'm like, that sounds awesome. <laughs> and then, you know, 10 years later, they're like, pull a, pulled a little sneaky on you. It That's actually right. gives you PTSD. <laughs> Congratulations, you have three arms now. Yeah, you fucking piece of shit. Exactly, miserable piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I I kind of thought like um, um, this this idea for like maybe like a science fiction book, right? Mm-hmm. That somebody uh, gets like a platelet or like a blood plasma um, transplant, right? Okay, and then right at that time, there's like right afterwards, however long it takes to kick in, um, there's some sort of like fucking um, a smallpox or you know some other you know God forbid 
chemical warfare attack. And this dude is like the only one like in that town that survives because like whatever platelets or like plasma he received was from a dude who had like his complete series. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with it. I'd read that. So um, um, if any of you uh, hundreds of learned doctors All right. you know, that listen to the show it's very true. want to tell me if that's scientifically possible or not, mm-hmm. uh, we'd appreciate it. And if it's not, anybody who's super creative, make a comic book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And have Dan be the star. <laughs> <laughs> and just make me like 10 pounds thinner. That's right. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Um, but if you don't have the desire to uh, eat right. Yeah, yeah. And um, well, I'm looking at both of us here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can use Combat Comb Over to make yourself more attractive. Very true. It works use, like a charm. Use our discount code uh, Cream Pie, mm-hmm. which uh, we think about we might change that. It's it's looking like we might push past that. Uh, the yeah. old jokes of cream pies. <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, you know, now that I'm in a, in a committed relationship, right. I, I might uh, might have to compete for that cream pie king title. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. like you know, the overall like I mean you know you can't do that, but as far as like maybe you know per quarter. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, like uh, I mean, points it, per season. It'll t- it'll take a couple seasons for sure. <laughs> You're not gonna be a rookie sensation. <laughs> <laughs> a rookie. I'm 33 <laughs> years old, <laughs> and I am still a virgin. That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so uh, use our discount code Cream Pie. Mm-hmm. Uh, save yourself some money. It, uh, it they have hair products and beard oil and keep you looking fresh and fabulous. Semper Fi feeling it. Ooh, I like it. Oh yeah. Uh, speaking of which. Um, Combat Comeover actually uh, released a new scent. They and, did, yeah, and so that, that's something that I, I definitely wanted to um, to to bring up. So they have this new scent. It's kind of like the uh, Mrs. Claus Naughty List scent mm. is what it is, and so they actually have a a very interesting story behind it that we wanted to read on air. Yep. Um, and so while I'm pulling that out, I'll also give a strike force energy, uh, shout out wah, wah, wah. It's, uh, vitamins and supplements that you can put in your beer, your tea or your butthole, mm-hmm. uh, use a uh, <laughs> discount code smoke pit and you actually save like 20%. Yeah. You get a, you get a little, uh, chunk of change back for that. Yeah, It's pretty generous. It's like, uh, you know, uh, you get like a 40 pack and it breaks down to like a dollar per unit, which is like a third or a fourth the cost of like, if you get an energy drink. Exactly. And it's, even if you buy strike force energy at a gas station or something, you're still saving money having it delivered to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's a veteran owned company. Yeah. And, and they, they're good uh, people. They're good people. Yeah. So we have, uh, some, some stories from the website. They're actually really funny. You should oh. go check it out. Cause they have a uh, stories for all the products. Oh, nice. Uh, but this one is like, I got a DUI. Uh, D- DUI in um, in a GSA, <laughs> oh wow, a gover- government government vehicle. Yep. Uh, when I rear-ended the deputy's daughter. Oh wow. I if she was hot. Yeah. But she's probably ugly. That's why she tattled. Well, for sure. Well, I mean, I- I'd like to know more of the story. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, how fast were they going? What was the situation? What was the weather? Yeah. I need I need details. Uh, I lied about my knee surgery when I first enlisted. After I deployed to Iraq, I blamed my knee problems on the military, and now I have a badass disability rating. <laughs> uh, and these are these are all from uh, customers of uh, that. I guess they just like to uh, tell their life story. It's like an amnesty box. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good fucking point. Yeah, amnesty yeah. box. You yeah. know, I wish there was like that in a relationships. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, be like, hey, look, I know I didn't fucking mention this earlier, but I absolutely hate your dog. <laughs> Amnesty box. <laughs> Kicks dog. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought your major in college was stupid. <laughs> right. <laughs> Kicks dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I used my post-9-11 GI Bill the right way. Uh, picked a college in San Francisco with the highest bond in the country, over $4,000. Damn. I go to one class at the beginning of the term and then use the excuse of military training, quote unquote, to get out of ever having to show up again. I do everything online and get the full ball rate. Wow. 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 What a scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> you guys kind of suck. <laughs> <laughs> I never pay for snacks at the movie theaters. On my way in the theater, I always snag me a large bucket of popcorn out of the trash. Then I make a hole in the bucket. I don't know where this is going. Yeah, yeah, for real. And when I get uh, when I go to get a refill, the staff member always notices the hole and always gets me a new bucket. Fuck Regal Cinemas. Wow. Wow. And you said the cinema by name. <laughs> yeah. Um, Regal Cinemas actually uh, hired me once. Oh, really? Uh, to do a job. I, uh, I cleaned out a few of their old uh, um, concession machines. And okay. And they paid me a, near $1,000 for maybe an hour or two at work. Nice. So I would like to say, fuck this individual. Exactly, yeah. I love Regal. 
Yeah, and they have that new card now that it's like for eighteen bucks a month. You get like unlimited movies. Yeah, yeah, they got good deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. especially bro, the fucking movies coming up for next summer look amazing. Yeah, next year's gonna be good for movies. Oh for my sure. god, it looks for so sure. fucking good. Um, last one. I wanted to go to the strip club, but was stuck at home with kids. As soon as they fell asleep, I Wi-Fi called myself from the iPad and put in a Bluetooth earpiece. I went to the titty bar a block away and played slots for an hour. Wow. 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 Did you win anything? <laughs> Someone let this guy come inside of them. Yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> and he said kids is in plural. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Wow. I, oh, I would like to sit down one day and, oh, I mean, I and then really grow up with parents in that aspect. But if sure. I did, I'd like to be like, what shit did you do Yeah, that I was uh, not aware of? Yeah, yeah. And then also use that as an embassy box to tell them about the, the, the kinky shit that I got away with. Okay. You know? Wow, just confessions through and through. Yeah. You got any confessions for our listeners? <laughs> <laughs> Pertain to what? <laughs> not anything. You know, it doesn't have to be anything any, super heavy. Any confessions? Yeah. I don't think Get so. something off your chest. I don't think I owe these people anything. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Confessions. Um, not really. I can say something that when I was home, I was reminded of. Uh, well, no, I'm not going to say that. Actually, now that I just thought of it, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> if you want to know the real story, DM him. No, don't. Don't DM me. I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> uh, well, Okay. So, okay. <laughs> a lot of life is sin. I know you got to narrow it down. So, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a shitty thing. I, um, so I used to be kind of a savage back in my, I'm talking like 18, 19 years old. Like I was, wasn't the best person, but <laughs> I, uh, this is before the military and stuff, obviously. I, <laughs> I had a falling out with this guy, right? And, uh, I had a bunch of stuff over at his place and one of them was my PlayStation, and you know me, I'm a, I'm a PlayStation guy through and through. Yeah. I'm staring at mine right now. Yeah, Love we're it. actually waiting for uh, the new Call of Duty to finish uh, downloading. Yeah, we're going to. So if you want to play with him, his handle is, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> maybe later, but. Oh, uh, if, you're, if you're trash, yeah. <laughs> go away. If you have a 5 to 1 KD ratio, yeah. then squat up. That's right. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Stack on this door. <laughs> I um, Yeah, so I went over in, so. He had this little chihuahua, and I fucking hate chihuahuas, and I fucking hated this dog because it was a fucking bastard. But um, and this chihuahua had like chewed on my controllers, like the little, like the joysticks, and they're all chewed. And he's just I didn't like him. So I went over, I went over to retrieve my things, and uh, I was uh, maybe a little a little drinky pooer or so. Um, I was in I wasn't in the best mood, and so I got my stuff and I was like in a rage and I didn't want to like break stuff or cause I've never been that kind of guy, but I did see the dog and he was in a corner and it was a chihuahua. And so <laughs> he was like shaking and barking as they do. And so I thought, you know what I should do? <laughs> I should pee on this dog. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I cornered him and I, I peed on his little leg, and then <laughs> I didn't like douse the thing. I mean, that's pretty rude, but uh, yeah. So I got I, I I peed on his leg, and then I left. <laughs> uh, and it's uh, it's bugged me. It's haunted <laughs> me for years. <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm glad that you gotten that off your chest. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Do you do you feel like um, in that situation, uh, would you do it again? Probably not. Eh, maybe I'd probably take a dump on him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I've never done anything wrong, so, no, <laughs> so <kidding>. moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 this was really silly, and I, I really kicked myself for it afterwards. Uh, a long, like maybe um, two or three years ago, I was uh, talking to this girl, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I asked her, I was like, "Oh, so what are you doing?" And she sends me a picture of uh, this book. She's like, "Oh, I'm reading this book called Blank," and she's like, "Oh, it's like really good. Have you have you read it?" Which is always kind of offensive when people ask me, have you read this book? Right. Because, like, unless it's, like, the Bible, like, there's probably a good fucking chance that I haven't read it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I've read a lot of books, but then again, there are, you know, a huge surplus of books out there, you yeah, know? Yeah, for sure. Like, the chances that, you know, the maybe 30, 40 books that I've read in my lifetime align with, you know, the five or six that most people have read outside mm -hmm. of Huckleberry Finn, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's pretty... 
Yeah, it's pretty bold of you to assume <laughs> that out of the million books, I would have picked the same shitty book you're reading. Exactly. Outside of the book holes, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And so, but the funny thing was, is I had actually just parked in front of a, um, a shopping plaza. And so to my right, there was a grocery store and I was going to walk in and, you know, get some groceries for dinner. Right. Immediately to the left, 10 feet away was a Barnes and Noble. Okay. So I walked into the Barnes and Noble, looked at the, the kiosk and found where the book was. And I uh, bought the book mm-hmm. and I uh, read a little bit of the intro and just like so and like the synopsis and stuff like that. Sure. And then I took a picture of it in my hand and I was like, oh, my God, I have been reading the same book. First off, this isn't a confession. This is just a clever thing. <laughs> no, because I, I, I felt bad because like at that point, like it was definitely her meeting my representative. Oh, my like, God. I pissed on a dog. And you <laughs> lied about reading a book. The fuck out of here. <laughs> Um, I actually never finished the book um, because we stopped talking. Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> yeah. And it was one of those things where I was just like, oh, this book's stupid anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I hit a chihuahua with it. Nice. There we go. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's bouncing on the fire. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Caused the great Chicago fire of 19 tickety. <laughs> Many lives were lost because yeah. of that chihuahua and this dumb whore and yeah. their poor choice of literature. Mm-mm-mm. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, so uh, if you do want to impress a young lady, a good way to go about it is to cook for her. Sure. And if that's the case, you should use Grill Your Ass Off Seasoning. Agreed. Uh, use our promo code Smoke Pit to save yourself some money. They have seasoning for all kinds of different meat. My yep. personal favorite is the Pop Smoke Fajita Seasoning. That's right. And that's not because I am ethnically inclined. <laughs> <laughs> and my family came from Puerto Rico. Sure. Um, but that's because it is tasty. Yeah, it and because it has my name on it. It's very good, yeah. Like <laughs> it, yeah. But they also have brisket and um, other seasoning for steak, chicken, pork, whatever have you. Mm-hmm. And uh, also make sure to check out warfighterscuba.org. They're a nonprofit that does combat uh, wounded um, vo- uh, adventures. Yeah, yeah. There yeah you adventures go. for combat wounded veterans there so they is. can do skydiving. Or, jeez. <laughs> How late is it? Yeah, it really is. Make sure to check out uh, warfighterscuba.org. They do um, scuba diving trips for combat wounded veterans. And it's an amazing experience I went through. It was fantastic. Check them out. Uh, if you're not combat wounded, please consider and donate. They uh, they definitely appreciate it. Yep. So, uh, anything else you want to talk about before we get to our interview with Donnie O'Malley? No, we just, um, I'm good. I've said a lot. Uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, if, uh, if you guys do want to check out uh, A Grunt's Life movie, which we're going to be talking with Donnie about, uh, definitely go to agruntslife.com, I believe, or just check out Vet TV, and I'm sure you can find it. Um, but, uh, yeah, he sent us, uh, an early copy of the movie and we got to watch it right before we talked to him. So our opinions are fresh. Yeah. And it was a sneak premiere, you yeah. know, cause we're bougie like that. That's right. Yeah. And if you are interested in possibly hosting a premiere, uh, reach out to vet TV yeah. and maybe if you're not a fucking weirdo yeah, and you know, you have, um, you know, some good initiative and drive, maybe you can get that shit done. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. So. We are going to transition into this. It was a call over Skype because Donnie is a very busy man um, and lives in California. Yeah, exactly. We live in Virginia. We didn't want to go out there, so. (laughs) (laughs) But we will be going to San Antonio for Burbiz on November 14th. Very true. Last chance to sign up. Uh, It's free. There's going to be an open fucking bar, Michael. I will be wasted. I always am. Yeah. I love these events so much because not only do we get a network and meet other entrepreneurs and influencers and all these things but uh it's just it's a fun time so if you haven't been to one of these events definitely check them out they're a lot of fun yeah and like i said a four hour free open bar fuck yeah Yeah, i mean how can you go wrong with that and it's primarily um if you need to sell it to your wife or your boss or whoever sure so you can go it is a networking event for military and spouses yep uh to help them transition and if they have transition help them to make the most of it very true tons of resources and giveaways and um, all, all your favorite influencers will be there. Hell yeah. Yep. All right, cool. So uh, enjoy the interview and make sure to uh, share this with your friends and family. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Check out our YouTube channel as well. But most importantly, guys, we really appreciate you listening. And, you know, take five seconds if you like this episode and uh, text it to a few of your buddies and be like, listen to this shit. Yeah. Boot. <laughs> What's up, Cream Pyres and Death Defiers? It's your boys at the Smoke Pit, joined today by none other than Donnie O'Malley. Wah, wah, wah. Um, he currently holds the world record for the largest penis of a uh, Marine officer. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and, uh, it that. is, you know, it is easily verifiable. Um, you can just ask any woman within a hundred mile radius of Oceanside, or you can watch his brand new uh, feature length film, A Grunt's Life. There's a, a copious amount of uh, of nudity. I would say the penis looks great. The balls need work, though, Don. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The left was a little low. It was. It was um, a low hanger, but I appreciate it. As a as a man with nice uh, tight balls, right, right. Uh, very, very. Um, <laughs> They're tactical. I can bring them on an airplane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I was. It it just really uh, the definition of high speed low drag That's right. is is what I felt when I saw your your testicles gracing the screen. <laughs> but no, it's it's um <laughs> great movie. That was really good. Yeah, so I before like before we get into that, uh, Donnie O'Malley uh, was a uh, Marine Corps infantry officer. Fun fact: uh, he was actually one of my students at basic school. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so like the whole time throughout the movie, whenever there was like a tactical error, I was like, I taught him better than that. That's right. Yeah, he knows. No, that. <laughs> <laughs> no actually, I was, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, was uh, I was in Quantico at the same time, and then I was also one of the instructors for infantry officer course when he went through. Fucking grueling course, man. Probably some of the best fucking shape of my life is when this is just like double obstacle course, double endurance course, yeah, and then yeah. like classes for six hours, and okay. Somebody fell asleep, so back to the obstacle course. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> good time though. Uh, Listen so, to life, uh, dude. Yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you just said a whole. You just said all the important shit <laughs> on the cock, and that's what I was going to do. That did it yeah. for me. <laughs> Fuck, man, you stole my lines. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, um, any highlights from your career that we missed? I know I, I did one pump to Southeast Asia and one pump to Afghanistan. And I was a rifle platoon commander first with Echo 25. And then my second pump, I was a weapons platoon commander uh, with Fox 25, Black Hearts. Right on. So, um, <clears throat> it's actually I, um, pretty, pretty close to Mike just because he did one pump um, in Afghanistan, um, at least. <laughs> at least, at least. Yeah. yeah. And then he uh, actually gave two pumps to every woman in Southeast Asia. There it is. Yep. I got the man's career with a pun, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, when when did you get out? I got out um, at the end of 2014. And when did you have, first have the idea to start uh, Vet TV? Um, it was not until um, I had received comments on some of my first. Uh, YouTube videos, mm -hmm. uh, like my early, my very, my first four videos, um, they got around the infantry community pretty hard and they were like showing them in all the schools and shit, <laughs> like at ITD, like nice. that was the greatest compliment to my existence. Yeah. Uh, machine gunners course. It was, that's, that was their opener. And like in a bunch of different Marine Corps schools are using my shit as openers. Yeah. And, so for, uh, for those who haven't seen it, what uh, what do they have to type into YouTube to find your your, uh, your early videos? Um, gee, it was Donnie O'Malley, um, first woman to graduate IOC, discovered to have penis. Yeah, that was you a classic. classic. That was searched the, that one. Yeah, that was classic. That was the first one that I ever did. Yeah. And in that time, or just a couple weeks after that, some guys were like, multiple people um, were like, dude. I would pay for this shit. Like I'm not finding this anywhere else. I would pay money for this. And I'm like, well, I need a job. <laughs> so let me see how I can monetize making videos for this community. Mm. And the answer through my research was um, that selling it transactionally, selling tell, short little clips, you, you, you can't monetize that because Amazon takes 50%. Like right off the bat, it's gone. And so I'm like, okay, I, I, I forget how I got to it, but the answer was a subscription service. Yeah. And I'd charge a monthly fee, give them a certain amount of things. And then I thought, well, no, I want this to be like a real television network. I don't want to just fucking make YouTube videos. I want to make scripted television shows because my dream was always to be a filmmaker anyways. Like I always wanted to do film and television. And my dream was always to start Happy Madison Productions. Yeah. And so when when I saw this, de this demand in the veteran community, I'm like, well, I, I want to, I want to make comedy for this community because, uh, 
this is where I feel the most comfortable. Like this is where I fit is here. So I'm just going to stick on here. So, <laughs> Yeah, hell yeah. So was that before or after uh, uh, your book, Confessions of the um, the uh, the Marine Corps Rifle Lieutenant? I, I might get that fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you, you hit like four of the words. Embarrassing Confessions of a Marine Lieutenant. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you were close enough, dude. Um, so that was after- I would never be so unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it was definitely afterwards. Um yeah, because you you uh, you experience a, a fair amount of success um, with with that and uh, critical acclaim, as well as um, <laughs> uh, critic uh, critic um, backlash. Probably, backlash. Yeah. There are some people who weren't uh, very happy about that. But as um, as somebody who um, shall remain nameless has sure, said, sure. that if uh, somebody's not upset with you at one point in time in your life, then what the fuck are you doing? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're just not being honest enough. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when, when did you uh, decide to make the transit or that the transition from writing uh, full length books to, you know, either short script or scripted episodes? Cause you know, you have programs that run, you know, for maybe um, 10 or 15 minutes per episode and you have, you know, um, shows that, that go much longer. So how was the transition between writing books to writing scripts? Um, ugh. well, if you watch some of my, some of vet TV's first shows, you'll see compared to now, it's a rough transition. <laughs> um, cause I, I, I took one screenwriting class and the rest of it was just self-taught. And it was like at a community college while I was in wounded warrior battalion, like I'm a Marine captain going up there <laughs> on crutches after surgery <laughs> and, uh, taken with film classes with all these film nerds where I realized, God, this is where I belonged my whole life. I think that I was able to make it work because I was the, the writer, the shooter, and the director and the editor. Mm. So it's like my shitty writing was, I could compensate for my shitty screenwriting because I was the director and all the director needs is vision. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I can, I can transfer the shitty writing and I know how to make people laugh. So if I can just fucking get it to the, to the on camera, get it in the, in the, in the, in the bag, I can edit it if my filming wasn't that good because I love the editing process. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I know I can retell the story any which way I want if I fucked it up while filming. And so it's like my transition as a screenwriter was like just getting away with the bare minimum as a professional, now professional screenwriter. And then learning through, actually, it was mostly through the other Vet TV staff who, you know, we just had this culture of like, yo, we want to be great at this shit. And so we all taught each other and we were listening to podcasts together and then we would review the podcasts and like talk through these screenwriting podcasts and, and uh, watch YouTube videos together. And so we kind of like made each other better. It was a really cool culture that uh, facilitated uh, expedited learning of how to do something professionally. Um, so, I, you know, talk about fucking OJT. <laughs> um, We're doing training. Teaching. So, yeah. so anyways, yeah, it was rough, but made it, it was able to overcome it through other things. Okay. So you, um, you, you, much like us, you wanted to make content that is uh, specific for uh, this community. And um, because of that, uh, sometimes the, uh, the subjects uh, aren't so clean. Uh, we've had pushback from people who said that uh, we're too vulgar. Uh, we actually um, just re- uh, like a month or two ago, we had to record a clean episode yeah. because the uh, uh, the Marine Corps wanted to uh, publicly distribute one of our episodes through Marine Net. And so we had to do like a clean episode, which was fucking awful. Yeah, I, I fucking hated it. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, was, it was terrible. And, um, you know, so you've, you've told that there are people who – or organizations, and I, I won't make you name any names if you don't want to, but there are organizations and publishing companies and distri- uh, distributors that won't distribute your your art because it's too offensive. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's it's up to us as as veterans to to kind of band together and to help promote us uh, each other and stuff. And so if you if you were to say outside of the mind of the creator and the writer of your new uh, feature length movie, uh, A Grunt's Life. Um, 
how would you want somebody to describe it to convince one of their friends that this is something they need to see? Oh my God. Great question. It is, it's like a warrior fantasy. Like it's filled with the kinds of things that a lot of us wish we did. You know, a lot of that was my fantasy. Like, mm. should I wish that I had done mixed with a lot of stuff that I did do? Right, I did right. it. <laughs> is this fucking allegedly, concoction? Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> allegedly, yeah, yeah. It was a concoction of reality, parody, and fantasy. So um, that's that's how I would I would I would tell my buddies like yo dude it's it's just like imagine if you took some of the parts of when we were there and then made complete fucking jokes about them and then every now and then had a fantasy about what we wish it was like right yeah because there there were some uh, times and not to give anything away yeah um, but there are times where watching the movie you didn't quite know what was real and what was fantasy. <laughs> then there were times where some things that happened that could have been either because sometimes on deployment shit uh, is so crazy <laughs> that you try to tell your buddies in a different unit or your civilian friends and they just don't fucking believe you. Yeah. You know, like, um, you know, for uh, a, a bit of a teaser, uh, I, I won't say too much, yeah, yeah, yeah. but there, there's a moment where, you know, a Marine uh, who's a 240 gunner is giving, uh, the, I guess he's an 0331, a machine gunner, and he's given the 11s the opportunity to shoot the 240. I fucking laughed my ass off of that part. I love that bit. And uh, <laughs> is they had to pay for it with like hands right. and dip yeah, or yeah. hand jump, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah. And see, here's the beautiful part is like interpreting that, you know, it, your art through my lens, mm -hmm. I was able to tell myself, I don't know if this is just a fantasy that, you know, is being incorporated to it or if this is actual part of the real dialogue, because there's sometimes uh, where you see highlighted versions of yourself when you recollect what actually happened during a firefight. And there was one time where I did a non-lethal takedown on this guy. And in my mind, I was Jason Bourne, you know, like I closed the distance, I muzzle thumped, I arm barred, you know, like I was powerful and I was strong and I was fluid. But in reality, I looked like a monkey trying to fuck a football, trying to get this guy on the ground. <laughs> Like if there was a God can, I'd probably look like a fucking asshole. But in my mind, I look like a fucking badass, you know? And, and so that's the beautiful thing is, is like with the movie, you know, you can decide what parts of it are part of uh, your character, Lieutenant Murphy's, you know, deranged uh, fantasies and what part are actually uh, real. Because the, the beautiful thing is, is that, um, and, and don't worry, I'm, I'm saving all these words to put in the review. Uh, the beautiful <laughs> thing is, is the things that are the most extreme circumstances and then the small nuances mm -hmm. that little things that you pick up, they're completely interchangeable as to what could be real and what could just be, oh, that would be funny. And that's what gets logged in your mind. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is the most amazing thing to hear, bro. You were literally the target audience for this fucking film. Mm. It was made to make those who had experienced real warfare, who had felt what it meant to be to live a lifestyle of a warrior for years, to dedicate a portion of their life to being a real old fashioned savage warrior. <laughs> um, that's who this was made for. And that is exactly you. So hearing that from you, it fucking that means a lot, dude. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And okay. um, <laughs> my you got any questions? Uh, not questions. I just have, there were two very, and I, I don't want to give a, away a lot either, um, but there were two very niche jokes in there that I fucking love. I just want to tell you directly. Uh, the scene where you and Staff Sergeant are stomping the guy's head made me laugh <laughs> fucking hard because it was like, it was like the three stooges of fucking stomping someone's brains. It was a lot of shrugging and like, what, what's, it gotta, what's he got to do? <laughs> um, that and every time Senator Murphy had the flashbacks of uh, getting revenge on the CEO. The CEO and the first sergeant were always eating like kings, and that fucking made me laugh so hard. <laughs> it's just the yeah. little things. You're like, yeah, fuck that fucking guy, and fuck the guy next to him. Like, yeah, uh, those are two things that just fucking made me laugh the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, and that's uh, that. That was uh, one you. of the the, mm. the fantasies and the flashbacks. Mm. The, there was something that I pointed out about the food. That is just like, yeah, that could be real. Like, granted, right, like right. this is a this is this part right here is just a, fla a fantasy, but that right there would be what's you know routes it uh, roots it in yeah, uh, yeah. reality. 
you know, those, those little things, uh, the little details. Mm -hmm. And then there were some things that were just fucking like, you know, you got to be really offensive to take two guys who's, you know, with, with all humility have been through some shit and make our fucking like, uh, make me audibly gasp yeah, during yeah. one of the fucking scenes. <laughs> and I won't tell that part because I don't want to give that away. Right, yeah, I yeah. want everybody else to, to suffer what I suffered. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but. Fuck, which scene? <laughs> yeah. So there is one pressing question that uh, I know our audience is going to want to know, and mm. we would be doing a disservice if we didn't ask. Whose dick do I got to suck? To get on a vet TV skit. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Being a grunt's life too. Yeah, because I mean, you. like, you had, I mean, you just let anyone on the set, like, you had Jack Mandeville, you know? <laughs> no, I'm yeah. kidding. I'm yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We love Jack. <laughs> I'm going to see him in like a week at yeah, Burbage exactly. and he'll punch me in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not giving you a know about this. Exactly. It's just Jack. It's just how he is. Comes out swinging. Yeah, but, you know, like, uh, yeah, like, fucking time and place. And yeah, for we real. will be there. Like, I, I, have nothing going on in my life. The smoke pit audience is, is growing, but they're fucking passionate. So yeah. <laughs> they want to see these mugs on TV. And none of his paternity <laughs> tests have come back yet. So yeah, while so he still good. has the money before child support, yeah. we need to get out there. You gotta catch me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, gotta catch you while you're single, man. Bring you out to Southern California. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, um, be here. If come anybody who knows me personally, I, uh, I'll just throw this pitch out there and uh, feel free to, to say no or, uh, you know, do the typical officer thing at TBS and be like, well, it's Met T dependent. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I, uh, I personally was in a campaign called Steel Curtain and it was the third largest battle of Iraq. And you never hear about it. You always hear about, you know, Phantom Fury and you always hear about, you know, uh, Ramadi, but you never hear about, uh, you know, the battle of uh, Huseyba which is uh, the third largest campaign in Iraq. And we were in triple digit enemy KIAs and fucking nobody ever hears about it. And, you know, so like whose dick do I got to suck <laughs> to have a small part of Operation Steel Curtain be part of a grunt slide too? <laughs> no one's dude. Let's, let's talk about this fucking right now. Actually. I don't think you heard me. <laughs> I'm offering a blow job. I'm just saying he's been giving me a hand job this whole should time get it. for no reason. <laughs> Um, I will, uh, I'll, I'll offer it to John Acevedo for all the pain that I put him through. Okay. Um, but if, if he doesn't, I'll, I'll take it if, if, if he doesn't want it. <laughs> um, no, uh, no, no, not at all, man. I, this is, so a lot of the stuff that you saw in there was based on stuff that either a fantasy that existed in my mind or something that someone else told me. Like I, I overheard a Marine having this saying having those kinds of conversations um and uh and a lot of it was just like yo wouldn't it be funny if this happens and this happened this like and i i i said those wouldn't it be funny ifs in afghanistan like the porta potty mm -hmm. that I, I i said that in afghanistan i had that vision and joked around with it to my buddies and you know it was like a thing back then like the shit was all that was born out of infantrymen in combat every thought that went into it so i i hear the stories of shit that guys do all over the fucking country and i insert those stories into our scripts as the editor-in-chief of vet tv and um you know i'm not because I, I haven't even written a fucking script in a long time i just wrote a sketch recently but we have seven writers who, who do all, all the writing so as they're inputting their scripts i'm i'm meeting with them you know, in a, sometimes a couple times a week for the, the writing deadlines for their shows. And um, uh, I'll, they'll, we'll read something and I'll be like, oh, you know what? This guy I talked to on a silky site, he told me this one story about, you know, the, the, this chick, uh, you know, fucking the guy's wife, uh, you know, in, a, in some orgy thing back in, in Camp Fort Campbell. And we, let's take that true story and let's put it into there and let's just change it up to make it work with your scene. Right, and it's right. like all of our stuff's filled with that shit. Yeah. And so coming into AGL2, I'm already writing it and I'm filling the scenes up. And so you give me a fucking badass moment that happened when you were in combat and that will fucking hit the screen. Mm. Just give me great moments. Now, the story, AGL2 itself, is going to take place in the same deployment as AGL1. Um, because money wise, uh, we don't have another location. So like, <laughs> be better than we got. 
<laughs> and so, um, and all the actors from AGL one want to do two. Nice. So I haven't gotten them. I haven't gotten their contract signed yet, but I will. And it's like same cast, same location, same deployment. And then now within that context, I want to put Lieutenant Murphy through the ringer really bad. I want to show him go crazy. I want to show him losing his fucking mind mm. to the point where he actually breaks down and Rich has to take over the platoon. Okay. He's just like, you're fucking, you have lost it. Mm. And um, really puts Murphy in his place. And then he's got to break out of that somehow to then you know, regain control of his own sanity and figure out how to lead the platoon. Cause I want a lot of his guys to die in each other too. Like okay. his dude is going to be getting fucked up. Yeah. And that's the shit that pisses him off. Um, yeah. Cause, um, and I'll, I'll throw this out there. I, um, I, I remember in my second deployment, um, obstacle was really high and, uh, we had some individuals who were really sleep deprived and it fucked with them, you know, like you, you go out and you do a mission, you do a raid or whatever. And, um, then, you know, people would just be fucked up in the head and then that plus sleep uh, deprivation. And then so eventually they'd snap, right? And they get sent back to whatever the nearest FOB is. Um, I think it was TQ uh, at the time, but somebody would take their rifle and they would give them the clicker at the chow hall. And their entire fucking job in life was to sit at the chow hall all day and count how many bodies came through the door. And so to go from the pinnacle of an infantry Marine, you know, stacking on your fucking brothers doing raids in the shit during the fucking surge in 07 to be in the chow hall fucking clicker and having to tell people their camis are too dirty like <laughs> i can see lieutenant murphy in like a situation like that and being like i need to fucking figure this out and get back to my men you know like just because the idea of being so far removed from being a fucking warrior and you know having like the, you know it's having to tell a marine that he can't have chow because there's blood on his fucking on his flak jacket you know the kind of shit that happened to, to us back in the day. And so like that, I could see that, especially for that character being, you know, like he has his fucking breakdown. And so he has to, you know, Luke Sasser has to take over and he's put somewhere. And I'm not telling you how to do your job, obviously, but you know, we no, don't no, no. know. Go tell me, tell me what you see. I see him just sitting there just like fucking and like a kind of like a small 30 second montage of him clicking and the number and people coming in and clicking and then grunts telling story like, yeah, that's badass, you know, and they walk by him and, you know, like, sir, rah, wah, click, click, click. And then just like, you know, the fucking eyes and then just kind of fucking snaps. And that's when he starts to take his shit seriously. That's when he goes to the chaplain and he's like, I need to figure this shit out. I need to get back to my men. Wow. <laughs> I'm seeing this very clearly. Mm. Uh, you can put an RP in. Boom. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> it's about fucking time. <laughs> Full circle. Full circle. Here, this Dude, Full that, circle. That was, this was beautiful, the way yeah. this just happened. Um, <laughs> watch this shit hit the screen, too. Um, I'm going to start doing things soon um, where I just want to get all the dudes who like who are, have an interest in EGL2 um, on calls, just like on fucking Skype or whatever. Mm. And um, and maybe Facebook lives, I don't know. And we're just going to develop scenes together just like that. I mean, you just, I, I, I saw that very clearly. Um, and I want to, I want to add something to that that I think you'll appreciate. One of the things, uh, one of the, one of the things that excites me the most is, 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 uh, coming up with a really horrible thing and come reverse engineering how to get people to feel okay laughing at that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of setup involved. In yeah. That. And so um, one of the things that I really want to do is I want to show Murphy, I want him to skull fuck the battalion major um, who is, um, I want to say he'll be the operations officer. Yeah, because my opso when I was in Afghanistan was straight up like, he he looked like Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> <laughs> he had a Hitler stash. Oh God! And had just the look in his eyes. It's like it wasn't all there. This constant state of fucking uh, fear that he he doesn't have his shit together. <laughs> and he lived in that state. Yeah. yeah. I remember he after him saying some stupid fucking things. I remember just thinking. I just want to fuck his mouth. Like I really, I want to fuck his mouth until he dies. Yeah. I want to watch him choke on my cock. 
because oh he also used to do this he also go ah uh, um so uh the uh town commander said ah uh, ah uh, like over the radio ah uh, the whole is the joke of the battalion yeah and so I imagine him going ah uh, ah uh, and then just <laughs> what year was that that was in 2012 so obama was president yeah yeah because we had guys you know not, nothing against the you know the the president or whatever uh but yeah we had guys that would say it like that in the fucking radio and be like oh shit the commanders and chiefs on the fucking you know uh gents uh be advised um <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's fucking that's funny dude <laughs> that's that's the kind of shit we'll have in radio traffic. Yeah, dude, we got we got to get on calls and, and, and develop scenes and shit. Yeah, because I uh, th- this is more of an Easter egg for our listeners, but we told a story a while back that it fucking blew off. So once we get to the uh, the fundraising thing, I think we could probably do like a uh, uh, a t shirt for Operation Liberation, absolutely, and then They're donate some of the process uh, yeah. towards um, um, you Whatever. know, yeah. Getting us out there. <laughs> yeah, just getting us out there. Yeah, yeah. No, everybody's a huge fan of that story. Yeah, uh, real quick, just yeah. for you, Bonnie, and I'll, I'll send you the clip afterwards. But uh, we were so fucking bored on our last mission in Iraq that a fire team took it upon themselves to liberate a random emaciated cow from a field. <laughs> and so they moved up tactically and, you know, cover and moved. And there's a little dinky cheek uh, chain. They took it off the snack, smacked on the fucking bony ass. It starts walking at a crawl all the way. They're like, fuck yeah. Like we just liberated this cow. <laughs> Operation liberation, baby. <laughs> They're high-fiving each other. And then the Iraqi that owned the farm and the cow is like 20 feet away, like in a chair on the porch. And he stands up and he goes, mister, why? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, ah, oh, fuck, we gotta get the cow back. And so now, and now the cow starts fucking moving. Now they're chasing the cow at a full sprint around this muddy field, slipping and falling, trying to catch it. And they finally fucking get it. And they're all covered in mud, bring it back, put the little fucking chain on it. And they're like, we're so sorry. Like, please don't tell anyone about this. I want to make that so bad. <laughs> See, exactly. Yeah. All right. So we, uh, we, we got to, unfortunately, we got to wrap it up. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. we would love to have you back anytime. But as far as yeah. this episode, uh, any uh, any closing thoughts? Where uh, where can I our listeners find you? Um, I would say best way to find me is the gruntslife dot com, and from the gruntslife dot com where you, people can purchase the movie, then there is you can find that TV links on there. And um, but that's you know I think for your audience, the warrior minded audience, mm-hmm. I think go there first, and if they dig that, then the rest will follow. For sure, for sure. And uh, one last parting shot. We uh, we have listeners in 55 different countries. Nice. Uh, and I, I know we're going to get this question. Uh, is there any chance that uh, you might get like a uh, an, like an Aussie digger or like a Royal Marine Commando uh, appearing in future skits or a Grunt Life 2? I would love that. We were actually thinking of doing a show about uh, Camp Leatherneck. As mm-hmm. a means to be able to show like a lot more uh, uh, different entities, yeah. Um, and so, but yeah, uh, we were thinking about in, in AGL two. We were thinking of having a Brit, like there's a Brit on the fob because it's, it's going to be a slightly bigger fob. <laughs> yeah, it's something and, like uh, uh, you know they they go over to Bastion by the fucking Haji DVDs, you know, right, right. or the Haji pornos <laughs> or or whatever. And they, uh, they get into a, a banter contest with one of the Brits because the Brits are good. They're fucking. They're, good, they'll yeah. fucking roast you yeah, if you're <laughs> if you're if you don't come with it. Yeah, they will. I'll call you a cunt real quick. <laughs> <laughs> real fucking quick. Yeah. And the same thing with the Aussies, you know. They'll and they'll steal all the female fucking S ones. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. So um, make sure you check out Donnie O'Malley. He is on Instagram. Vet, Vet TV is on uh, pretty much all platforms. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, so thank you very much. We appreciate your time, and uh, we'll, we'll be in touch soon. Yeah, bro. Dude, you guys are so awesome. Thank you uh, for having me. Thanks for, for watching and taking and giving me notes. <laughs> it's so, so cool, man. Yeah, <sighs> we thoroughly enjoyed the movie. Yeah, for sure. Um, had her laughing our ass off, and uh, we're going to get with the Irreverent Warrior chapter here in Virginia Beach to see if we can be a part of helping uh, host the screening. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, my God. That'd be so cool, man. Get the fucking get pop smoke out there yeah, yes sir yeah. all right brother you're an inspiration to everybody who uh who you know who wants to be able to find their voice and express themselves creatively we thank you for your time and uh bye bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs>